morning, Jordan. It's a beautiful day and we are happy to take you away. Jordan, the Pearl of the Orient. A fascinating land with a culture that is thousands of years old. A land of colorful epochs and biblical history. All to be rediscovered in this Hasamite kingdom that was founded in 1946. Pharaohs, Assyrian kings and Persian monarchs once fought for this country. Nabataeans, Greeks, Romans, Byzantines, Crusaders and Ottomans. Each of them left their traces in Jordan. Jordan is situated in the Near East and borders Syria in the north, Saudi Arabia in the south, Iraq in the east and in the west, Israel.
Welcome to Amman, Jordan's capital city. Here, poverty and wealth live side by side. At first sight, the city's ancient roots are not obvious. However, they date back to biblical times. The King Abdullah Mosque is the largest and, due to its striking blue cupola, the most beautiful mosque in Amman. Although only completed in 1988, it's an important symbol of Islam. Five times a day, the Muezzin calls to the faithful from its minaret. In around 1200 BC, Rabat Amman was the residential city of the Ammonite. But the first settlement was established on the Jebel al kala the citadel's 837-meter-high hill. In the Bronze Age, a fortress was built here. It was later used by the Omeyyads. They built their main palace on top of the hill. The small archaeological museum on the hill features exhibits that date back 10,000 years. Impressive objects of great historical importance. An incredible collection of stone and clay heads and figures, all contained within this rather modest looking museum. The centrally located Al Hussein Mosque is the city's oldest sacred building. Heavy traffic passes close to its shining white exterior. Here, trade is in the blood of the people. Thus, the souks are kept well busy with shopping, rendezvous and gossip. It's part of Arab culture to carefully examine the goods, to pick the best, and then to bargain hard about the price. In the 1920s and 30s, the city's elite had their houses built in the side streets of Rainbow Street in a special way. Jordan River design. Steep steps lead to the highest of the city's seven original hills. And the black and white facade of the Abu Dawish Mosque. An exotic looking sacred building that was designed by a Turkish immigrant. From here, there's a good view across the old town. Today, most of the original Roman city centre is buried beneath modern roads and buildings. But the ruins still highlight the dimensions of the original structures. Pompeius conquered the city in 63 BC and founded the Provincia Arabia. Next to the Forum is the Roman Odeon that was excavated in 1957 and has since been on display in all of its former glory. Music and various performances once took place here and the view across the hills made it a wonderful setting. Roman buildings that had become commonplace since pre-Christian times were also built in Philadelphia, as the city was then called, such as the Modarag al-Roman, the great Roman amphitheater. Theatres to entertain, with plays and bloody animal contests. And because of its superb acoustics, it continues to be used right up to the present day. In the north of Jordan are the Gerash ruins. This ancient city was once called Gerasa, the Pompeii of the East. It was a member of the city alliance of Decapolis in the eastern region of the Roman Empire. The Romans built nothing in the Near East to compare with the buildings that were once here. Beyond the remains of a city wall is a classical Roman city that dates back to the first centuries that followed the birth of Christ. The most important buildings of the former city are still recognizable. 
an amphitheater, forum, colonnade, temple and baths. The city was originally founded by the Greeks during the reign of Alexander the Great. Later, the Nabataeans extended it in order to protect their caravan route to Damascus. When the Roman Emperor Trajan took over from the Nabataeans and Jordan became the Provincia Arabia, the city was at its most prosperous. But with the fall of the Roman Empire and sea routes taking the place of the caravan routes, the city fell more and more into decline. Finally, in 747 AD, a devastating earthquake destroyed the city and the population fled. For more than a thousand years, the city lay in ruins. However, in 1806, German archaeologist Ulrich Jasper Sierzen discovered the once splendid city beneath the desert sand. Six years later, the discoverer of Petra, a certain Mr. Burkhardt, announced these discoveries to the world. Today, the ruins are a popular tourist destination and one of the most visited attractions in North Jordan. Close to Jerash is one of the most well-preserved examples of medieval military architecture, the Kalat Ajlun Fortress. Emir Iz Usama, a relative of Saladin, had this fortress built on a 1200 meter high hill in 1184. Kalat Ajlun was meant to be a defense against the approaching crusaders and also to protect pilgrims on their way to Mecca. Under the rule of the Mamelukes, the fortress was extended and a moat was carved into the rock, although it was never filled with water. The fortress towers, stairs and many rooms are a veritable labyrinth and indicate its former size and importance. When in 1187, Sultan Saladin won the final battle against the Crusaders, the Kalat Ajlun fortress was no longer used. Later, the Ajlun fortress was attacked by the Mongols, but they did little damage. So it was not battle, but an earthquake that in 1837 destroyed the fortress whose ruins are still visible today. South of Amman is the city of Madaba that was mentioned in the Bible. It is referred to in the Old Testament as the location where the 12 tribes of Israel met. The St. George Church is world famous. It was here that the huge Palestine mosaic was discovered, an ancient map of early times. In order to protect it, a church was built over it. The Romans built a number of military bases here and during the Byzantine epoch 14 churches were also built in this area. Today the churches are museums in which valuable mosaics are on display, such as the floor mosaic in the Apostle Church.
This work of art was discovered in 1902 by a priest. It was created during the construction of the church in 578 AD. The Dead Sea is situated in a sunken Jordan-Israeli rift valley, 400 meters below sea level. It's one of a large system of rift valleys that extend from Turkey to East Africa and originated millions of years ago due to tectonic displacement. Today, the Dead Sea is a popular tourist attraction with visitors from around the world. International hotels proliferate here and the infrastructure grows day by day. The local thermal baths are ideal for diseases of the skin as their healing waters have a high content of mineral salts. Images of people floating on the water's surface or covered in mud are well known all over the world. Several inlets, but not outlets, are responsible for the high content of salt. In this, the largest inland sea in Jordan. Now we have reached the south of the country. The harbour town of Aqaba on the Red Sea. Its beaches and exclusive holiday resorts are extremely popular. Numerous water sports are also available here. Glass bottom boats provide an impressive glimpse into the underwater world of the Gulf of Aqaba. An intriguing sight. Kaaba's port is vital. It is Jordan's most important commercial harbour. This city is an important junction of trading routes that cover both land and water, and it has a long history. As does the Mamelukes castle. It was built in the Middle Ages, but during Ottoman rule fell into decay. However, during the Arabian War of Independence, it was used once again. An aquarium provides an opportunity to see the exotic fish that inhabit Aqaba's crystal clear bay. A colorful spectacle. Around 20 saltwater tanks contain some of the Red Sea's most interesting fish. A shining variety of various species that gradually evolved in this region.
Its strategic location at the junction of six important caravan routes, including the famous Incense Road, brought much prosperity to the city. The most impressive route to Petra travels through the Sikh, a narrow gorge with huge sandstone walls. There are only two routes that lead to the rocky city of Petra, a narrow mountain pass in the northwest and to the east the sometimes 200 meter deep Sikh gorge. In 1812, John Lewis Burckhardt was the first European to enter the ancient Nabataean capital city of Petra. The treasury symbolizes the golden period of the Nabataeans, who in the 4th century BC became wealthy due to trading spices, frankincense and silver. However, their newfound prosperity did not go unnoticed. Their neighbors strove after the fortunes of the Semite people who originally came from Arabia to this region of Jordan. Due to the strategic location of their capital city, in 312 BC, the Nabataeans avoided conquest by hostile armies. Prosperity first came in the 2nd century BC with the demise of the Diadox. The former tent city was replaced with stone buildings. Desert romance, culture and fascinating natural wonders. The exotic realm of the Bedouin is a taste of oriental history. To travel along biblical routes, to experience the promised land, to visit the Red Sea at dusk. A land of crusades, Roman cities, impregnable fortresses and mysterious desert castles. Jordan, a priceless gem located in the Near East with all the magical romance of the Orient.